What is going on YouTube? My name is Moro and welcome to another tutorial. If you are new to the channel, I make music production tutorials about mixing, mastering, composition and sound design and I also share my music to the world. If you are on a hurry, do not worry, just jump to the chapters that favor your needs or speed up the video. Make sure to click on the videos on screen and help the channel grow by hitting like, subscribing and turning on the notification bell for further tutorials like these. Anyway, that's not what we're here for, let's get straight into the video. This video is going to be about growl bass design and growl bass mixing. Basically, I want to show you my techniques on how I process my growl basses and how I design them as well. So for this, we're going to use the first drop of my song with Lou Stone in my dreams, which sounds as follows. Okay, as you can see, there's a lot of MIDI information. Most of the growls that I used for this part are serum patches. Let's start off with the first one. As you can see, there was a lot of processing. This is the mixer track for this growl bass. Without the processing, if you solo this, it's not really sound coherent. And so we're gonna start off with this patch in here. This is the Icon Has Kick patch. The wavetable positioning is being modulated by LF01 just to make this kind of growly effect. You know, the icon has kick in itself, it's already pretty cool. And I added a sub. If you want to know more about how to create a hyper growl wavetable, just make sure to check out the link that I'm going to be leaving in the description where I show how to make hyper growl really easily. The video itself is not about hyper growl design, but there is a section where you can actually uh, understand how to make this one. So if I solo this out, it has a very big influence. There is warp modulation here as well, which is bent plus and LFO2 is modulating this one. There is also modulation for both volume knobs of both oscillators and also the sub oscillator and the noise oscillator as well. LFO1 is modulating all of them. And as you can see, there is bend reject filtering. Only the width is being modulated in this case. All of the oscillators are being routed to the filter. And there is also this noise. Just simple noise. I don't even know where this is from. And then there is chorus. Not really much going on. I think the only thing is LFO2 is modulating the mix knob so that it's kind of wider when it's reaching its end. Some distortion tape saturation. Phaser. The frequency knob is being modulated. Mix is at 73%. Multiband compression. Equalizer. Just to emphasize the treble information. And then there is some filtering. Band reject once again just to emphasize the width. And also the cutoff is being modulated a little bit as well. Mix is at 100%. We also have this one. And I believe this one was Lou Stone who designed it, but I'm not sure. Don't ask me where this wavetable is coming from. It's a pretty cool wavetable though. Look at this. Awesome. And this one as well. This is a Lou Stone patch. Everything is being modulated by LFO1. High pass 12 filtering. Sub oscillator minus 2. Oscillator A minus 2 as well. Oscillator B minus 3 octaves down. Dimension. Some soft clipping distortion. Drive is being modulated by LFO1. Some compression. Normal compression. Reverb. Some equalizer as well. And some band reject filtering as well. There is also this really uncontrolled growl bass. It's basically the first patch that I showed you, but the difference is the warp mode is synced. So if I bypass this modulation, this oscillator B is actually minus four octaves up. And there is also sync modulation. And there is another patch. It's basically the same as the other one, but the only difference is that the wavetable from oscillator A is acid. Everything else is the same. <laughs> And then there is this patch, which is once again, same as the first one that I showed you. The difference is that there is this 4088 wave table in oscillator A and the modulation of LFO1 is different as well. My LFO1 is modulating the level and also the wave table position in a different way. Band reject filtering as well. LFO4 is modulating the cutoff as well. Some chorus, distortion, tape saturation once again, phaser, compression, equalizer, and then some band reject filtering. So not really different. As you can see, I first of all, create one patch. The rest of the drop is based in this first patch that I created. And if I want to change the sound, I just basically copy the first patch and I start messing around with different functionalities of the synth so that it kind of gives me other sounds. This is the same as the first difference is the modulation of the LFO one is different. 
as you can see this is the same as the first one loose on patch the difference is that the modulation is different and these automations especially for pitch bending and with so basic things as you can see the pitch is being modulated in the patch itself you can see. that's why you get different sounds and all of that so about the mixing of this first mixer track you've got some imager some patcher for saturation i've got two scents one wet and one dry and this saturation knob is only at 2.5 and then there is some eq just to make sure that none of the lows are being saturated and taming down some frequencies around this area and this area as well and bringing up some treble information a little bit it already makes a quite big difference and then some reverb this is a plugin that i got for free when i bought my audio interface pretty cool one small type plate preset some eq as well some limiting but not causing any anything in special and then some eq just to control the sound a little bit more some ott to <laughs> compress the sound and then some eq once again just to remove anything below 30 hertz and anything above 16.5 and then some fresh air and 21% in mids and 16% in the highs. Some limiting just to tame down some peaks. Some glitch for some automation. Pretty balanced just to for some automation as well, yeah. So moving on to the second mixer track. But let's just listen to this without the processing. So this is a vital patch that I designed. I learned this from AU5. Basically everything controlled by a macro and the macro is being automated as you can see. I am setting this to in harmonic just to make this coherent it sounds really white noisy if i do not set this to in harmonic and the formant pitching is to make sure that the sound is in pitch if i bypass this it really sounds weird and so i was careful enough because if i put this down a little bit you really got to make sure that this is the way you want it to be this set d2 really depends on the midi note that you are using as well for effects just some bit cross distortion and some compression as well multiband and also the level is being modulated by lfo1 just to make that tremble about the mixing there's some distortion fruity blood overdrive bringing up some mids and some highs with fresh air this sounds too much but with the glue compressor it kind of compresses it a little bit some wave shaper and then some stream effects for some hyper and some filtering some patcher this is the reverb i talked to you about and then some patcher once again more reverb some ott glue compressor and then some patcher this is for mid side eq I'm not going to show you this part because this is not really about growl basses. I am going to show you though this, which is a layer of this that I showed you before without the mixing. I'm not really sure how I how I designed this because this was quite a long time ago, but sounds pretty cool, sounds pretty lasery and metallic, it's pretty nice. RPS for grumble and due to quark, the oscillator A is being FM'd from B, so if I bypass this, you instantly see the difference. There is some comb filtering, comb plus. The resonance knob is being filtered by LFO1. As you can see, oscillator B is not heard, just FMing the oscillator A. And then some sub, some hyper dimension, distortion, compression, some chorus delay being modulated by LFO2, EQ, just to emphasize the vowel -y aspect of the growl, and some high pass 12 filtering, just automating the cutoff. When it comes to the mixing, just putting this more mono, a little bit more mono because I believe it was too wide. And some saturation once again, 1.2. Some reverb, parametric EQ, some OTT EQ, fresh air, limiting EQ. I believe this is automation. And once again, just some fruity balance for controlling the reverb mostly. This is a layer for this patch. These two together sound pretty cool, actually. I believe this was a resampling that I did from one sound, and I just messed around with the sound and until I got this watery type thing. I don't, it's not even a growl. EQ'd this and mid crushed it as well. Also, we've got this sound. So let me show you the patch. This is a U5 wavetable that I got when I bought his Serum Masterclass. You can actually learn how to do these if you watch the course, but I was kind of lazy this time. So I just used one of these. It's basically him saying AU5 if you move around the wavetable position. And this is the hypergrowl wavetable that I talked to you about. Make sure to check the video for more information about this. This kind of ramp up that you can hear, what's doing this is LFO1. So the detune being modulated 16 voice and the reason why this is doing this yaw sound is because the random is down oscillator b doing the same thing there is this fm from sub thing as well going on there is this noise thing as well there is some filtering as well bend reject once again just to emphasize this yaw sound post distortion removing anything above 13k chorus at 15 percent compression equalizer and some filtering the notes modulating the cutoff of the filter i showed you this sound with effects let me show you without effects 
not as deep. There is also this sound, which is the same as the other one, I believe. The difference is that this one is higher in pitch, it's at C4, and this is at C2. And there's also this stop and play, which you'll hear when I turn on the effects, as you can see. So there's this blood overdrive, saturation, 1.8, reverb, glue compression, EQ, OTT, and then this tape stop effect. Because the sound keeps going after the tape stop effect, I decided to automate the volume. In terms of group mixing for the growl basses, just an EQ, removing anything below 30 hertz and anything above 16.5k, there's this EQ as well. Raising up the high mids and some mid side EQ, removing anything below 100 hertz. So that's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, turn on the notification bell. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one.